Hey, everybody. I know that, um, you know, I've been trying to, at least trying to, I should say, uh, not, I haven't been that religious about it, but I've been trying to get these podcasts out every Monday. But, uh, this, this one was, I spent the week in, in Iowa at an event called Rag Bry, which I know that that is a really weird name and probably not, uh, doesn't make sense to most people, but Rag Bry is a, is an acronym for, uh, the Register's annual great bike ride across Iowa. So the the newspaper, the big, the, the largest newspaper in Iowa, which is the Des Moines Register, started this event forty plus years ago, and um, it's kind of grown. I mean, I think in the beginning they just had a few people, um, not a few, but a few, you know, maybe a hundred people that came out and did it. They rode across the state. Uh, every year, and it's grown and grown and grown. It's ended up becoming, as you'll um, um, come to discover during this podcast, it's, it's ended up becoming not only the largest bi- annual bike ride in the world, but it's uh, it's become uh, certainly the largest annual um, tourist event in the state of Iowa. So uh, w- whenever you're listening to this and you, you hear rag bribe, just know that rag bribe in, in in your own mind is the register's annual great bike ride across I- Iowa, and uh, um, my guest tonight is is T J uh, Jeskowitz, who's who's been the the director for I think fourteen years, and you know T T J is is a is a great guy, and I I went for my first time ten years ago, and um, he. Um, I met him for the first time there, but we were um, so involved on the cancer side via Live Strong and, and trying to really engage the political process to pay attention to uh, our disease, for lack of a better terminology, uh, on, a, on, a, on a national uh, political perspective or landscape and trying to and, – and we know that, the, you know, that Iowa is an important state for these candidates. So we figured if we could go to Iowa – ride bikes, get people there engaged, that that would ultimately um, morph into the candidates making cancer a national priority. Um, Which, you know, in hindsight, probably never happened. But nonetheless, it was a good idea. And that's how I came to know and love RAGBRAI. And it's just one of these things that I kept going back to. And as you'll, uh, again, um, learn as you listen um, it was the first place that welcomed me back after my life um, took a drastic turn. So, um, hope you enjoy and and uh, you know as I've commented before on social media and et cetera, or in other places, it's a, if you like to ride bikes and you don't really care how fast you get there and you want to hang out with really cool people and drink super cold beer and eat good food and. Um, and uh, enjoy the camaraderie with 20,000 other people a day on bikes, there's one place to go, and it's Rag Bri. And welcome back to the Forward Podcast. I'm Lance Armstrong. As um, as I mentioned just a few days ago, we were going to do a special special edition of the podcast. And I talked about, uh, a few days ago, I talked about uh, coming to RAGBRAI, which is, as I said again, a very, very interesting, unique event that you sort of have to see and be here to appreciate and to believe. But um, anyhow, I'll get into more about just sort of the texture of the event. But today I'm here uh, with the race director, do we call it TJ? Do we call it race director? Race? Rag bride director. Rag bride director. TJ Jeskowitz. Yeah, that's pretty good. You, you are officially the hardest name to pronounce on the podcast since since I had the Atlanta Falcons GM Thomas Dimitrov, which everybody calls him Dimitrov. So I met Thomas before, actually. and even we riffed a little bit last week with Chris Everett. Everett, look, I just I just fucked that up too. Um, <laughs> Anyways, the tough things. But anyway, so we're here. We're actually here in Centerville, Iowa, which – have I been here before? I don't think so. Well, it's confirmed. I haven't been here. You've you, not been here. We've been we here. We haven't been here in 36 years, so you haven't been here. I have not been here. I would have been nine during RAGBRAI, so I definitely haven't been here. But if you're sitting at home listening, you might hear a little bit of noise. We're in the hotel room, um, but RAGBRAI is such a 
sort of roaming um, party of bikes and and music and beer and pork chop and everything. That so what you hear out in the in the old town square here is there's a band going on right now. Later on tonight is TJ's favorite cover band, Hairball. Oh yeah. Um, but this is just just to give you a little texture. I mean, you have how many people a day do we have? They're counting about 20,000 cyclists rolling through, probably about another 5,000 support people. So a town of Centerville that's, you know, maybe 5,000 people is going to have 25,000 people roaming the streets tonight. Right. And you would know that when you tried to get on your phone. Absolutely. Or or you tried to send a text or get an email or or even make a phone call. It just wouldn't work, right? Centerville, well, if you have AT&T, it doesn't work. Anyways, Verizon, it's slow. So 20,000 riders a day. And again, I've, I don't know, I've done probably six or seven of these. And I typically start, I've done six. six. Thank you for correcting me. So I've done six. I figure you know seven. I would know. Next year will be number seven. It's a good number. It'll be a special year. It's a good number. Uh, but the first one, if I, if I remember correctly, was 10 years ago. was in 2006. Yep. Um, so I typically start a little later. And and again to the listeners at home, this is this is not a it's not one of these things where you say okay the start is at seven a.m. This is you sort of wake up and start whenever the hell you want to start, right? If you are stressed about the the length of the day or the heat of the day, you can get up and start as soon as the sun comes up. Um, or if you like tonight, if somebody's out late night with hairball drinking a bunch of beer and they want to sleep in and start at ten, they can start at ten. So I typically, anyways, long story short, I typically start later in the day. So I see thousands of thousands of cyclists as i pass by and it, it to me it it appears like you know if you told me there were 50,000 cyclists i would believe you but you say 20,000 how many people unofficial sort of bandits that just jump in either for the day or for the week or do you guys patrol that or can you patrol that well the roads are all open i mean as you as you know we're riding through cornfields bean fields and um you know some people just hop on for a day people actually riding through the cornfields well there's corn to the left <laughs> there's beans to the right you yeah. know sometimes we mix it up and do it the other way but yeah. you know we, we this thing started long ago it was open to the public hey just come ride with us and over the years they try to say i mean if if you had too many people here i mean these towns are tiny so the infrastructure just can't handle that many so we try to limit it we say probably uh, ten thousand people that have the week-long pass we put another uh, bunch of day passes out yeah. there so typically actual people were wristbands going down the road probably fifteen thousand another five thousand hop on to just enjoy it and again as i told for you listeners at home, I told you last week, if you had just finished watching the Tour de France, this is, again, I'm trying to paint this picture of what this is like. I'll just tell you today. So I'm riding along, you know, on a, on a nice high-end road bike, but you're passing people, most people that, that look like they literally ride one week a year. Like they come out and they sign up for Rag Ride, and that is the week. There's no training camp. There's no preparation. Yeah, they might, you know, summertime comes around, dust it off, get it tuned up, and then they ride this week. I passed a guy yesterday on a high wheeler, right? You know what a high wheeler mm-hmm. is. Oh, yeah. like, like for you guys at home, Google it. Um, I passed a guy today on a skateboard. I passed a guy running. I passed a guy uh, on a on a on a on a um, what are those those bikes that the, like a uh, recumbent dressed up as Batman. Oh, cool! I passed um, a dude on on an elliptical bike. I mean, there's just all these. Two years ago, or no, multiple years ago, I saw a guy that had a bike that had a sail on it. Like this is the biggest. So again, I'm just trying to paint this picture. And then people stop in all of the little towns. They stop along the roadside. They get, they they drink beer during the ride. They eat pie during the ride. They eat pork and corn during the ride. So this is not. Nobody's out here trying to win. But there are some high end bikes out here, and there, there are, are some people that they that start early. Train. I can't, I'm yeah, not up there. Yeah, early. you you know, and you can't catch them. You know, they they they're looking for the podium after they get done, and they're missing out on rag ride because the way you do it, I mean, this is without a doubt the most social bike ride in the entire world. And anyone that you know doesn't understand that has never ridden because you know the. Um, we are the cycling mecca for one week, and yeah. there's there's no doubt about that. The, we get people from all over the world, thirty five different countries, all fifty states, that that just come to just have fun. Thirty five countries. I mean, I can believe all fifty states, and I can. And for you cyclists at home or just casual riders, this is this has got to be on the bucket list. I mean, 
today I was talking to a guy from Afghanistan, worked, wow. for, the, worked for the Department of State. Um, him and his wife were riding, and she's from Panama originally. And, you know, just talking to me, he's like, you know, I've always heard about Ragbri. And, uh, you know, him, him and his wife rode today, having a great time. But I'm like, so where are you from? And he's like, Afghanistan. Literally he, from he, Afghanistan. Not, literally. Not, a, so, not an American, not a former, you know, not wasn't based in Afghanistan. Works for the Department of State. Wow. And um, so, you know, it's things like that that you just, you I know. I want to ride with that dude tomorrow. Yeah. So, I mean, people are from all over. he's got some good over. stories? I, I'd imagine. I, I, where was my, tra- your training camp? Mine was in Aspen the last couple of months. Mine was in mm-hmm. Afghanistan. Well, we had last year, we had a team of Muslim women that rode with us. And they were from all countries that are where the women can't ride a bicycle without rocks being right. thrown at right. them. So to come here and, uh, you know, the other part of being, you know, Muslim in the world of pork here, it's probably uh, a little interesting for them trying to navigate by the pork shop bus yeah. and all that. So, um, but they had a great time. And some of them weren't, weren't cyclists and but you know they had a great time and That's back so in cool. countries that don't allow women to cycle that is so cool what is have you guys i mean i'm sure you know the answer you have the answer to this but what is the economic impact on the state of Iowa for this week and then deeper than that like a town like Centerville so here we're in Centerville 6000 people i mean the, the town is jammed i mean i walk downstairs in the lobby and obviously it's the biggest probably the biggest night that this hotel bar will ever experience and the restaurant will ever experience but what's the impact for the state? They did a study with the University of Northern Iowa a couple of years ago. They said it's it's direct spending twenty five million dollars mm-hmm. just just for the week of Ragbri, and you know lots of you know gas for RVs getting filled up, lots of pork yeah. chops, lots of beers. Um, so three million dollars a day, more or less, that it's just dropped. And uh, it is the largest tourism event in the state, probably the only state in the nation cool. that it, that the number one tourism event's a cycling event. Um, there's state fairs bigger, but it's mostly Iowans. So we say we're the number one tourism state. Only 35% of the people are actually from Iowa. So, you know, you, you just look at I-35, all the people heading up from say, Texas, Missouri, coming into our, into our state. It's, it's just a stream of people. So, so you are the only person in Iowa who doesn't want the Super Bowl here. Super Bowl will never come here. We know that. Well, but it would <laughs> just say there were the, you know, the Des Moines, uh, uh, daggers you know were right you don't want yeah that would be that would eclipse that, right, would, right. that would mess us up on the that number would, one tourism you, event would, yeah that is so cool man and in the state is i mean when you say what, what it brings in in the state's cool i mean the state helps the state in terms of road closures and police and safety and the, st- the state has been you awesome. guys have to pay I mean, for that. you see you see it out there the Iowa State Patrol is at every corner like waving people through with sure. a smile you know in this day and age with what's going on with police I mean this is the greatest thank you to police you've ever yeah. seen in your life where people just ride by hey thanks for being here um, all the way to the top I mean the governor has just said hey Ragbri is one of the iconic events the governor's ridden several times with his family mm-hmm. so I mean we get the backing from the governor all the way down um, all the state agencies get involved it's it's a massive event for the state we've been to every nook and cranny of the state all 99 counties so it is truly an event that is based on being able to go into the small towns and bringing a major economic impact and and having a fun time doing yeah. that and you talk about the different counties so for for y'all at home so this is an event this isn't a week-long event that is the same every year you guys alternate between the north and the south this year we're in we go wherever we want to go are you, well, i love that well Never mind. I had that attitude for a long time, but um, but this year this, we're in the south, so you move it all. This forward, right? Yeah, forward. Yeah, That's don't, right. Don't forward. look back. Yeah. So, but you guys move it around. This year we're in the south, but I mean, I mean, you can pick whatever. Obviously, it's always west to east. We know that, right? That's you can't. Change you got that. that. Yep. Well, I got that right. And then, and then you guys select these towns or these small cities. You select them. That's mine. That's my oh boy. Wow. So you're like selecting the, like the Olympic bid, you know, you're like. With great power comes great responsibility. And how many, how many, how many, uh, you know, hundred dollar handshakes have there, have there been? You know, you don't have to tell us. You know, people, people are awesome. I mean, um, every town says, which means there's been a lot. 
No, no, I'm not saying that. There's no hundred dollar handshakes. Let's get that clear. I'm, um, I'm, but I'm you know totally what? You know what? Me. If I go to a Hawkeye game, there's a beer in my hand when I walk up and say, "Hey, you know, come to my town next year." If um, you know we're out and about anywhere, I mean, there's there's always someone that a mayor of a town will come up and say, "Hey, TJ, you know, you, we haven't had Rag Brian in twelve years. I, I would love if you think about our town." Right. So that's constantly there. I mean, this this week alone, there's people I'm like, "We're not even halfway done with the ride," and there's people coming up hey think about our town next year yeah. and uh and they know i mean i'm going to look at it and pick eight great towns um not going to disappoint i mean it's a lot of responsibility to say you know keep rag bright going it's been going on for 44 years so um you know hopefully they like these towns made it the ride a little tougher this this week but the towns are always going to be amazing yeah and i mean it's like like we're here in centerville right we haven't been here and you just said 35 years yep so I mean, like my day, my days, I go, I get up in the morning, whenever you know, get up and ride, and then I, I get done, have lunch, and then I go find like the local golf course, you know. So we're down here at the, the local country club in Centerville, and I don't know what to do. So I, I asked the lady at the restaurant, like, "Hey, you know anybody at the golf course?" And she's like, "Oh, I know the, the Justin is the president, and I'll call Justin, and you know." And then she calls Justin, she comes in, she says, "Well, they're closed today, but Justin said just go on out and play golf." Cool. Like that's I like that I love that. That's part. Iowa. Yeah, that's Iowa. And then we're playing golf today, and we're on. What are we on? Hole number six. And I see I see these people walking out from their house just with just with beers, just beer. Every <laughs> there's like six of them. Each have two beers in in each hand, and I'm like, okay, here comes the reload. I mean, that's what I I dig so much. So, anyways, for y'all at home, not that you have to do rag bra and go play golf, but that's just the the level of hospitality that I think is so unique. And and I and I've you know, it's a very it's very personal for me. I mean, I, I came here in 06 not knowing what to expect. We had Livestrong just cranking, and 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 uh, we're on a real um, you know cancer initiative sort of storm path there. And you guys were super cool to us, and and you know times go on and life changes, and then in, you know and my world changed a lot. I talk about that um, a lot, and and even though this is the Ford podcast, it's it's you have to recognize that. At some point in your life, things have to shift and, and move forward. And so from that moment, um, you know, I'll say to you and I'll say to everybody listening, I mean, TJ was the first guy to say, to call Mark Higgins, my manager, and say, Lance is always welcome at Ragbri. And that was, dude, that was so touch. Like, there, you don't have to do that. I mean, there, there's you have plenty of people. You're the boss. You pick the route. You, you know, you say what's up, whatever, but you have plenty of, I mean, the register in Des Moines has, could say, no way. He's not, you know, a, a sort of an old media institution. It could say, no, he's not welcome. And, and, and you drew the line and said, he's always welcome. And so um, I'll never forget. That's why I keep coming back and, and uh, I love it. Well, I lived up to my word. I mean, you said that night in Newton, when we're looking over, what, 30,000 people in that downtown that square crazy. and you're like i'm coming back a lot you get, yeah. better get used to me and i said hey lance you're welcome anytime and i meant it you know yeah. you guys um had a great time riding i know i mean i just saw your face when you came we have a great first. time period <laughs> your first <laughs> event i was like you know i think you're hooked and that's what a lot of people do but you know is I, it always yeah is it always hot i mean yeah. i'm trying again as you guys listen at home you'll get the sense for this it is so hot like and again, we get a little spoiled in Colorado in the summer, and I grew up in Texas, which is hot, but this place is hot. Yeah. Like it, it's this wicked mix of, you know, ninety degrees, ninety percent humidity, and just no shade. Like it's, well, you know, the last couple of days were like in the eighties, so you you should have come a little bit earlier. But, I should have started but, earlier. Yeah. Hey, let me get back to something when when I said you know you can come. Um, it was it was amazing the reaction. I mean, you had one camp that was like hey thank you you know what um, we love seeing him i mean he blends in he he understands the event um you know he's totally bought into it um rode a mountain bike one year just you know just stops and drinks a beer with us he's one of us mm -hmm. and then i had the other faction of people i mean i was doing interviews in countries i had no idea where they were like right. in switzerland and you know <laughs> and i'm like well, who are these people call yeah. me up to to speak but you know, all in all, I just, you know, I, I caught a lot of crap from, from some people, but you know what? It was the right thing to do. And, um, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. I, I ran in. Uh, I hope you're not still catching crap. No, 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 not at all. But, um, <laughs> one, one thing, uh, you know, obviously Steve had 
And yeah. I ran into Steve at Sea Otter right after we talked. And um, he said, you know what? That's really cool. Yeah. And he said, you know what? He, he told me, he said, you know, Lance thinks a lot that, that um, you know, you, you let him back in the game. Yeah. And uh, he said he doesn't forget that. No. And he, he mentioned that, obviously, you know, Annie was out here yesterday. Oh, I and, didn't know that. Yeah, Annie was out here and um, the, she brought the here? kids. No, she took off. She ah, to I back. wish I would have known that. Yeah, oh, she was hey. here. So, and for y'all, and again, it's just easy. We need to give a little backstory. So Steve Head was a longtime sponsor and supporter of mine who makes great race wheels and cycling wheels or bike wheels. Um, and, I mean, I met Steve Head in 1980. 6 1987 he was literally my first sponsor and um he tragically uh, just suddenly died um two two or three years ago from a, a massive heart attack and uh he would he would come with us to rag for years because he helped us outfit our buses and and but steve when he speaks to i guess you know talking about myself a little bit if he speaks to me not forgetting something i mean he would know that because i was Steve and I were, I never forgot that as a 15 or 16 year old professional triathlete, he was the first guy to say, Hey guy, you want to, you need a set of wheels. You need a little monthly stipend. You need, you need a little help. You need a little support. And so for, for all those years, all those tours, I rode, I mean, Steve had, I guess we could have gone and got anybody to pay for us to ride wheels. And not only was Steve a, a fun, smart, quirky guy, but, but you know, we had history. He came down to Ragbri even before he started riding with you. And he said, you know what? This is the best product development. He goes, I developed my best wheel set, best selling wheel set by watching the riders of Ragbri. Because like you said, they're not, they're not, you know, 106 pound racers. These guys are 210. And the and, roads can be and, rough. And, you know, they're talking when wheels. And yep. he goes, I built my, my best selling wheels watching guys, you know, break spokes and doing all this. So he goes, he goes, Ragbri has been great to me. I've, yeah. I've kind of did a lot of product development and, That's cool. and so, you know, he always brought that up and just say, you know, I mean, I mean, obviously he was a genius in, 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 in the industry and, you know, but he was one of the people, I mean, you notice, you know, there's not a lot of industry people here for some reason, they just kind of forget this massive event. I mean, we, we are the largest cycling event in, in America. I mean, there's no doubt a lot of, cycling events claim they are the biggest but i mean anyone that's been here knows i mean you you haven't seen any events bigger than this yeah. have you well why wouldn't it be a great place to test product i mean you have like i said for him the roads at times can be although this the two days that i've done so far they've been the remotes have been roads have been remarkably smooth but you've got wind you've got hills you've got tens of thousands of people so breaking uh, surfaces are an issue. You got people that are they're all over the roads at times. They're pulling into a rest stop. They're whether it's on the left side or the right side. So you, but you have to pay attention. It's not like you're out on cruise control here. At least I'm not. But well, that's cool. We we talked about Steve and and um and I, the when it comes to Ragbri, the thing I remember the most about Steve was he he helped me build this bus. Oh yeah. And again, painting this picture of what Ragbri is like. If you if you can imagine. Most of these teams, at least back in the day, would buy old school buses. So I, I don't know where you find like Craigslist or someplace you buy on eBay, buy an old school bus, and they customize them. They paint them. They change the interiors. They put in racks on the, or, you know, these big racks on the top. The, the sound system, showers, grills, uh, kegs, every beds, whatever. And so Steve helped me build out the old Livestrong bus. Which I think is still at his. Is it still, Dave? Is it still at his? It's still at his his uh, factory there in, in Minneapolis. I should bring that out of retirement, maybe. But what I've noticed this year, it seems like the buses are evolving. Have you noticed this? Did you Did you climb on any? No. Yeah. No, just but pop it just in tomorrow. No, just watch them. But but the the old sort of old school school bus, right, with the nose and mm -hmm. the front. You don't see as many. I mean, you're seeing more flat nose school buses. You're seeing more almost almost like tour buses, more bigger mm. RVs. It's kind of oh, like America old... getting a little softer, though. You know, I... they want the creature comforts, and I kind of like the old school, you know, snub nose. No, I know you do. Yeah. I, would, I would imagine. Yeah. So, you know, I'm glad you but guys. But do you not get the sense that that, that old uh, oh, yeah. old guard is dying yeah, away? It's, it's definitely so... creating into a new category of 
you know, almost like tour buses. And uh, I hope it doesn't completely go that way. We like keeping things. I mean, it's a traditional event, you know, 44 years. So yep. let's keep some of those things. They're sacred. You know, keep those old school buses. Right. But but even like your bus, I mean, it breaks down every once in a while when you got those oldies. Oh, it, bro- it broke down a lot. Yeah. I mean, you buy a listen, an old school bus. This is a big vehicle. You can buy it on, on Craigslist or eBay for two or 3000 bucks. Yeah. I mean. You can't buy anything yeah. that moves down the road for two thousand dollars. So you're buying something that's forty feet long for two thousand dollars. I got news, it's going to break a lot. Yeah. And you know, but then I t- I also see too. I mean, this is this event, is, and I spoke about the heat. It is not easy because it, it it seems to me also inevitably it's always a headwind. For whatever reason, riding from the west to the east in the month of July, you're not going to get a tailwind. I mean, maybe if the road shifts a certain direction, but in general, it's always a headwind. So you have the heat, you have the wind, you have the hills, um, and then people get done, and it's you look around, and you, there's not these are smaller towns. There's not enough hotel rooms, so there's the campground situation is massive. So I could, I guess, I could almost see how they're going. All right, well, what if we rented an RV that has a shower and has AC, and we can make our own food, and we could do these things. It's kind of like a tailgate, you know, if you walk through those campgrounds, I mean, you go to say a Texas game, I mean, you see the RVs out there with the food spreads and all that, and they get coolers of beer and kegs right. and open bar. It, you know, it's that type of mentality. You ride your bike hard, you earn that, you yeah. know, you earn that beer, you earn that, you know. But uh, so far it's still, I mean, until, I mean, maybe that's starting to shift, but it's, it really is tent city. And again, I, but if you all are here, if you just drove around Centerville, Iowa, whether it's the church parking lot or whether it's the high school football field or whether it's, whether it's, I mean, the reality is people in the state of Iowa say, our yard is your yard. So if you want to roll up and park your 1972 school bus and pitch your tents and you need water and maybe, you know, maybe come on in and eat, I mean, that's what happens here. Like people, it's, it's amazing. Cr- it's, I mean, I've never seen anything yeah. like it where people literally open their homes and open their communities to tens of thousands of people. Well, I came up, I was living in Florida in 2002 before I had this this job. I was doing events down in Florida and uh, came up in road rag, Brian. I was just like, just amazed. I was like, there's no way people are this nice. Right. From walking to a VFW and, you know, they're like, hey, you know, come on in, you know, use the bathroom, whatever. Old ladies cooking pies at the Methodist church and you know, it was just like, you know, a, a step back to, you know, 1950s, you know, with leave it to beaver type of mentality. Um, so I was like, there's no way people are this nice. And I, I got to tell you, people are really that nice that 365 nice. days they, a year. They are that nice here. And so, um, you know, people ask me all the time, do I miss Florida? I'm like, well, if you ask me in February, yeah, I miss Florida. But, um, you know, they're just the people and are, I mean, and I got the greatest job in Iowa. I mean, to be honest with you, because I get to visit with incredible people and see that hospitality year round but um you know do i miss going back i mean yeah i go back occasionally. it's a good point i mean it's it's hotter than donut grease right now here and and dude i mean in january february it must was a snowing nice scene it's mm-hmm. like so the, please tell me there's it, at least like a shoulder season that's like super fucking awesome well there's the first year i was out with with jim green the former director and we're in fort dodge iowa i couldn't tell you where fort dodge was years ago I look at the bank sign and it was like negative 16 degrees. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? And you know, I, I got to thank my wife, Jody, and to, to move from Florida to come to Iowa. Um, you know, she's a saint. I mean, to raise our kids, I said, you know, you come here, this is the greatest place in the world to raise kids. And she's a full-time mom, you know, awesome mom to Jason and Cammie and, um, people ask all the time, would you go back to Florida? I'm like, I'm like this, this is home. Right. And, and how many years have you been doing this? This is 14 years. 14 years, and the event is 44. 44. You know, when because when, on the jerseys, the only way you know this is because of the jerseys you guys sell every year. You have these Roman numerals, and I'm, you know, I barely squeaked out of high school. So you throw some Roman numerals on me. You get to 44, and like I'm like, uh, I don't know what that says. It's just like Super Bowls. So, you well, know, yeah, but we, we, we've kind of copied that. And I, you know, they were pretty smart back in, you know, sports marketing to come up with the Roman numerals because, you know, you put something that says 2015 on it, you can't sell those jerseys. So I think, uh, I think, 
if you know someone can correct me if i'm wrong but i think the rag bride jersey is the number one selling event jersey and by by far so in primal makes y'all's kits yep primal is a great company Good. out of colorado and 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 how many jerseys do you think you're going to sell this year in 2016 we'll sell over 10,000 jerseys god that's insane <laughs> And, and you know, and do you I, sell them just this week or do you keep selling them? Well, we have year round sales of our online store and we have a, a bricks and mortar store at the Des Moines Register. Um, but you know what? The week of RAG, right? With registration and, and um, you know, on the on the city squares and all that, we're going to sell just, just a ton. We, you know, employ probably 50 people this week just to merchandise and keep people safe. But, um, you know, they make amazing stuff. They got amazing artists that, mm-hmm. that work on these jerseys. And, you know, the, the thing that we do, we keep it affordable. You know, this, this event is $175 to ride for the week and include your camping. Wow. Jerseys, we sell them for, for 55 bucks with, with um, you know, you go into your, you know, say Melo Johnny's, you buy in a jersey for 55 bucks. We want that. Um, you know the, why? The, let me just answer that question. No. No? Okay. But you know what? You can't go on a ride without seeing a rag bride jersey. No, you've ridden all over the. No, you country. see, I see them. You do. That's right. I see them in the summer, and it's you know what's so cool is when I see these. Whether it's I see them just on the road, and and if I'm cruising down the road in Aspen, or if I did like I did ride the Rockies the last two yep. years, which is is really good friends of ours, yeah. It, it, well, good friends maybe, but a complete rag bride knockoff. It's right. okay. It's okay. I'm not. I'm just saying. It's we're, a great we're, event. It's we're still a, the best. Sorry, Chandler. But yeah, we're, but we're the no, Chandler's best. great. But th- that is it, it, anyway. We'll, I want to get into that because I want to talk about other people that have tried to to uh, imitate, for lack of a better word, this event. But there are people at Ride the Rockies wearing rag bride stuff. So whenever I see that, or if I'm in Austin, wherever I am, I'm like, hey, I rag bride, oh. you know, and and they're like, that's like a badge of honor. Like, fuck yeah, I I rode rag bride. I rode it in. And what's an even bigger badge, bigger badge of honor is like I wrote it in, you know, nineteen ninety one. Like anybody done it every year? There's a couple. There's about eight that have done it every year. Amazing. Doing it this year? Yeah. There uh there's some that started when they were uh, you know, just tiny kids. You know, they were seven, eight years old and just uh there's a doctor out of Des Moines wrote all forty four. I mean, just incredible people. We lost we honored um I think it was a 10 people on the 40th anniversary. We brought them up on stage and gave them a lifetime pass that, you know, you're, you're grandfathered in. You never have to, you know, buy another pass again. Um, we lost Carter LeBeau, who was, who was one of those people. He was the first of the, of the old timers that kept coming every year. But, you know, still every year we see some of these people, I mean, to ride 44 years, that's like, that's Cal Ripken ish, you know, it's yeah. incredible without an injury or, or something. Right. That is amazing. That is amazing. And so I was talking, we we're talking about Ride the Rockies because it's, I did it for the first time last year. And when I went, I realized, um, and again, these are different. This is, we're in Iowa, that's in Colorado. They're obviously very different places. Mm-hmm. But then you, re- you also realize that started by the newspaper in D- the Denver Post. And, and I didn't even realize it was, it was created or started or sponsored by the Post until I got there. And I thought, this is Ragbri. This is Rag Bry in Colorado, um, but I've I've had a good time there, and it's it's cool to see. I don't is anybody else? There must be other people that nobody well, in Texas does that. But. Well, there's there's probably about forty different states that do a ride. I'm I'm actually the national president of the the Bike Tour Network, and we have you know people like Ride the Rockies, Cycle Oregon, all those mm-hmm. all those rides. We get together. We're actually on the beach in Florida this November for our conference and. Um, so you get to go down home. there. Yeah. You get to go home. I'd, ha- I'd be happy, happy to yeah. go down there. I actually, I did ride the Rockies last year for one day um, with a friend of mine from Austin named Tim League, who was actually the first guest yeah. on this podcast. And I did, I did it with him again this year. And Chandler, and this is Ch- Chandler who runs Ride the Rockies, asked me. They do a, I don't know if you guys necessarily do this, but they do an event on the eve of of um, of the ride every year, and they have somebody come in and speak. And so they asked me to come talk. Um, luckily for me, the event started this year in Aspen, so I was right at home, and they had it at the at the high school auditorium, and uh, it was moderated by Ron Kiefel, an old teammate of mine, oh, longtime sure. U.S. pro, and and it was it was like it was uh, it was pretty epic. I mean, we 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 threw down, 
and not Ron and I, but so much, but but me and and the riders. And there were probably six or seven hundred people there, standing room only at the high school auditorium. But it was it was great. It was great. I I got We we videoed it. I get I'll get it up for you guys at some point. Cool. But I totally just that doesn't work here. Those talks, you know, people say all the time, "Oh, we can do a talk." How do you compete with? drinking beers in the square and all yeah. that people just want to go have a good time and well be you i don't know you could put them inside where it's like 70 degrees they might they might they, yeah, they might but you know they Kermit might the be outside. talking i'll yeah. be there yeah like well they watch movies that you know what's playing tonight oh barney yeah okay we'll sit down in the movie theater to cool yeah. off has anybody wanted or come to you or have you guys thought about having a race like making rag bride so you have obviously you have the ride for tens of thousands of people but has, has anybody said, well, why wouldn't you do a stage race, like a, a, a traditional cycling stage race? Well, I mean, there's been people pitching all kinds of stuff. Why don't you do a crit in downtown? And why don't mm -hmm. you do, you know, I mean, everything under the sun. Someone pitched the other day. My buddies are like, hey, let's do a cross race during Rag Bri, which would be pretty cool. I mean, I've been across Vegas and other places. And, you know, yeah, it'd be kind of cool. You've got but some gravel sections. So yeah. got a little bit of that. We now. added a gravel loop. Yep. I mean, that was that was Steve's suggestion, by the way. He had, lo Steve, had, had, like, Steve had loved the gravel scene. So, um, you know, we, we get a little diverse and try to do some different things every once in a while. But, you know, to block off the roads and all that during Rag Bright would be insane. Yeah. And, you know, we're already taxing our authorities to, to keep everyone safe. So it's, uh, it'd be kind of tough to do a race unless it was a, a crit or something like that. Yeah. Well, that you could do. We're a ride, and people are here to have a good time. And, yeah. yeah. But this event, so this is not... I mean, it's like any big time event that has tens of thousands of people and, and open roads and heat and you know you just have so much, so many factors out there. You're gonna have accidents, mm -hmm. and whether it's the hotter than hell hundred in in North Texas that is just obviously very hot and has lots and lots of riders. I mean, somebody dies every year. They die of heat exhaustion, or they die of a heart attack, or they die of a bike crash, and. I mean, you guys aren't immune to that. I mean, it happens, and I, I'm supposed, which has just got to be the worst thought. Going, okay, in next year, in 2017, you know, somebody's going to pass from 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 coming to Ragbri. Yeah. And you know, this year has been a. I mean, I, I, the only reason I bring this up is because I, I think it would be. I don't, I, I don't want to dwell on it, but I think it would be disrespectful to the friends and the family of the people that came here and wanted to ride and loved the ride that that weren't able to complete it and leave and go home to their loved ones. And so it's been a tough year for y'all. It has been. Uh, just in, in the state of Iowa alone, we had eight, eight fatalities on, on the bicycle. So on the opening day of Ragbright, we in, implemented a mile of silence. Mm -hmm. And we've never done that before. Uh, we work a lot with the Iowa Bike Coalition. They're trying to, you know, change some laws. I mean, just, you know, get over to, you know, if you come up on a cyclist, get completely in the other lane instead of yep. trying to squeeze by him. Yep. Um, but you know, even on the opening day of rag ride, we lost a rider from Jacksonville, Wayne Ezel that, um, you know, he's out there riding his bike and got, got hit by a car. Um, the so next, on, on the route on the, well, he was, he was off route, but, but still with all the, all the, Before things, the start after the finish, well, I think they lost. were going out to the river to dip their tires and, um, we which started, is, which I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's a tradition. So the, the tradition here is you dip the rear tire at the start and you dip the front tire at the finish. You got it. So he was going out to, to, to fulfill tradition. Yeah. And, you know, we, we brought some water in from the Missouri as well, um, just if they wanted to dip their tires and, and so they had a ceremonial dip. But, you know, he's riding out with friends and got hit on a, on a road going out there. And uh, with all the attention of Ragbri in, in the community, you would think, you know, people would be paying attention. So, um, hmm. you know, obviously we feel horrible for the family, uh, teammates that had to, you know, witness that, um, you know, wish them, you know, wish – you know the family i mean our condolences obviously um but you know good things maybe for the state you know with the attention uh the governor comes out the next day and says you know what we're going to focus on bike safety right. and you know said hey it's going to be one of our priorities mm -hmm. and to get that um statement from the governor for governor brands has been governor for for many many years of you know for the longest serving governor in, in america who's ridden rag bri comes out and just makes a statement not not that we were pushing him or anything he just comes out and says this is going to be a priority it's going to be part of my state of the state of the state address so um we're going to keep pushing to make sure that it's okay to go out and ride i want to ride with my kids somewhere i want to ride with my wife and 
to you know worry about getting run down is you know it's a fear that every cyclist and it was an with. accident or it's an accident yeah yeah no i mean i think on the accident side whether it's just people being careless or on their phones or or just just being disrespectful or just being just downright mean I mean, we got to create and that would be cool i mean i would could do that i mean here you have the state you just told us it was the number one tourist event in the state uh, year round i mean the, the, why not come out and say that i mean put that stake in the ground and be like this yo this is what we're going to do and i mean you could see you could see the accident at the beginning of the week or you could see what happened in kalamazoo i mean the, the stuff that has been a crazy year for for automobiles and bikes and people yeah. and the the intersection of all of those things has not been good in 2016. Yeah. And we had a lot, you know, a lot of those Kalamazoo riders. They're rag riders in the past. Yeah, the They're chain team. gang would. Yeah. They, when I went to Kalamazoo and rode with them, I think um, they had mentioned to me that some of them had been on previous rag rides that that I had been on. And again, it's just another instance where you're like, yeah. you look at the other person, you're like rag bride. Yeah, you did. And, and it's it's like this, it's like it's like this weird solidarity that that. You just share with people. Yeah. That was pretty cool of you to make that trip to Michigan. And I, I'd never been. I'd ne I've seen bike crashes and deaths and and tragedy for my entire adult life, and I'd never ever ever been that um, stunned by an accident. And then, you know, just having been there, it made it even. Well, that morning yeah. after we're doing our pre ride, we ride. Uh, across the state in june we ride so i rode every single mile that you guys are riding and 420 miles in seven days 75, 30 mile 75 our degrees no humidity 30 mile in our headwinds in the in the spring um but you know i mean the tragedy from from kalamazoo happened and you know we're we're 50 people riding i mean there's people in tears of right. people we don't know but you know we have the common bond we knew yeah. we knew that area there's going to be there's going to be five rag briars that were it's interesting when I, because when I ride, uh, for, you see, there, like when you ride, ride the Rockies, that is a different type of rider. Like you sure. see that person, you're like, okay, this guy's, you know, whether they shave their legs or whether it's the equipment that they have or whether it's the type of shoe they had or the way they clip in or the, just the way they ride. When I went to Kalamazoo and rode, and we had about 700 people that showed up to ride. I mean, everybody on that ride looked like they ride rag bright. Yeah. Like it's just a different style and a different dress and a different but it was it it's it just awesome it's, it's weird I'll, I'll go out we do we go out to say sea otter and, and bike leadership conference and we're riding out there and everyone riding a bike is just all kitted out and yeah. they're like and they worry about what their strava time is and just you know everything if how their glasses are if they're outside their helmet or you know it's just like really right. And we're we're like the sandal nation. I mean, there are people that exactly. ride triathlete, you know, triathletes that ride in sandals. And you know no, that I, whole Tiva. So cool. And for you guys at home, I mean, the, the, there are they look like sandals, or in the old days we called them Tivas mm -hmm. that clip into bike pedals. And so, but in Kalamazoo, there was a lot of sandals that clipped in, and, and which are great because it's cooler and you can get off and walk. So here at Ragbri, people stop every hour, right? They may ride for seven hours a day. They stop every hour, if not more. And they want to get off and walk around. They don't want to be like clackety, clackety, clack, like that dude walking around with his with his cleats on like me, um, um, which I don't blame them. Like, try, wanna... try the sandals. You might like them. Because then you can go right to the golf course without even changing if you wanted to. Oh. Uh, well. If you wanted to. Yeah. No. They probably have a high... <laughs> But you know, did you, I mean, I'm by a, by far, I'm, Iowa, the number one sandal cleat selling state by like ten times. You can figure that out. Yeah, because because you of would your, think it would be because Florida of your event or California because of your event. Yeah. That is exactly why Shimano not, actually brought back the two strap sandal this year because of the, the saying that that was the greatest sandal ever made. Well, then they ought to they ought to fucking call it the rag bride. They should, and and you ought to get. I'll, I'll take I'll take a little scratch I'll, from. Them. Not that they would take my call, but I'll talk. I'll talk to somebody. Wayne Stetton, if you're listening, <laughs> you heard that right. So we just have a couple more minutes because you got work to do. You got you got we got hairball coming up. Your favorite cover oh, band yeah? in a minute, but um, these campgrounds, like this whole tent city, what I'm what I'm curious about, and maybe they've toned or you know since people are transitioning to buses or different things, but I mean, how crazy are people too tired to get crazy, or does shit get crazy? Well, sometimes you got to. I mean, I'm, when yourself. I say crazy, like, 
Like, I mean, real crazy. There, you know, this is spring break for these people. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a one week because they got to go back to their real jobs. You know, they're doctors, they're lawyers, they're teachers, or whatever. So for but one week. But you got some week, derelicts in there. Oh, they're, oh, we have, we have everything. We have plumbers, right. farm. I mean, people say Not farmers. Not the plumbers or right. derelicts. No, no. Well, I'm you just and me saying, both get in trouble. We've got, we've got teenagers. We've got everything under the sun that yep. rides. But you know what? You put spandex on, everyone kind of looks the same. Some look a little better than others, but yep. they still got a pedal. And, and so, I mean, there's no, yeah. Okay. No. You're not giving up any stories. No, no. Oh, it's just all perfect and good. We're tired from riding. We're going to bed. <laughs> well, you know what? You go late. You've been late night in one of the beer gardens on Ragbri. I mean, there's some people having a good time. Yeah. And when we get a when we get a kick-ass band like Hairball tonight, I mean, there will be some people. I mean, Hairball, they come out, and they hit the accelerator and go zero to 60 and, like, and don't let off the pedal. And they just go two and a half hours of just – unadulterated rock and roll and so again for y'all at home hairball so growing up how old are you 51 okay 50 so roughly the same i'm 45 so growing up you know in that hair rock era with the crew and rat and doc and and uh, you know ted nugent whoever i mean so so hairball comes out in in their cover band they play these songs like if you just closed your eyes or put a had a blindfold on i'm not shitting you you would think that rat and Motley Crue, and you know, uh, they probably play. I don't know. Well, they hit Kiss and, and Poison Kiss and all that. And po- yeah. oh, po- how could you? Yeah, how so, could I forget Poison? So I, I take Twisted my sister. I take my son to Hairball. Like they're in Des Moines, and my son's fifteen now, and like uh, he's hanging out and met. TJ's met, more. He's more excited about Hairball well, yeah. than anything. This is like the highlight of your year. This okay tonight. I'm glad. That's cool. But Good, you know what? I brought him backstage, and he met the band, and they're like cool. And um, so that later in the summer, we're up in New York visiting relatives up there, and uh, I, I had the opportunity to take my son to Kiss. And so he's like, "Hey, they're just like hairball." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, that's pretty cool." And I told the band, "I was like, yeah. this is like hairball light." Yeah, it's cool, very cool. So, uh, but hey, you'll check them out later. They're they're pretty good. And again, so whenever y'all get here and come ride Ragbri, you'll see. We talked a little bit about the buses and the teams, but you'll see when you ride, you see how everybody, whether it's a college or whether it's a charity or whether it's a corporation or whether it's just a, a team name that they make up. They've got custom kits. They've got, I mean, they stick together. A lot of them carry music with them. And um, it's cool, especially especially the college side of things. You see a lot of college rivalry here, whether it's, you know, University of Iowa or Iowa State or University of Northern Iowa. Or, sure. And then a huge charity presence. I mean, yeah. you have Well, every, you knew that firsthand. I mean, yeah. you see a few friends from Livestrong out there today? We see we see a few. We a few see jerseys? A few. Yeah. yeah. There's a, you know, that, That's they were the, one of the teams, but you know what, you see other, you, you see, see pedaling for Parkinson's, you see, you know, uh, JDRF, That's you see funny. all I, I those. Was, I, I, I caught a ride on the back of a tandem today for the last 15 or 20 miles that would, that would both the, the, the guy and I believe it was his daughter had the pedaling for Parkinson's on and you know, you get behind a tandem, I'm like, fuck, free ride. Like they were, you just, need a draft. Yeah. They were going and you know, they, oh. the, a tandem can get rolling. So yeah, you see. You see them all out there. And we've got another team, Adaptive Sports Iowa. They have all kinds of disabilities from, you know, no limbs, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of wounded warriors that are out there riding. They also have a lot of blind riders that are on the back of tandems. Yeah. And just, um, just I mean, really neat people that just, just doing, you know, side by side. I met this guy, Robert Bailey, down in Louisiana. He told me, hey, he's like, hey, can I come up and ride Ragbri? I said, I, I lost my limbs. Well, you know, well, I... Well, will they accept me here? I said, I said, buddy, this is the ride. Yeah. If you want to be accepted, yeah. you, you say come if, up if, here. If Lance Armstrong can come, anybody. That's can right. Come. But he comes. He's out there this year. He's riding. An, he's riding an upright, no legs. Wow. So he used to ride a recumbent. And he said, you know what? I'm cool riding the upright. And but he's um, got quads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So great, well, that, that great was, cycles. Uh, was takes him a while. The but. first year I was here, I, I, we, we started super late, and we were catching up to a guy, and I, and, and I spoke about this that night in Newton, um, which was the first big talk I gave here at Ragbri 10 years ago. And I, and I was coming up on this guy, and I thought, God, this guy is super tucked. Like, this guy wants to get arrow. Like, he is way down. And then as I got closer, I thought, okay, I mean, does he need to be that arrow? 
I get up on the guy. He's got no. He's got. He's got no arms. Not below the elbow, but above the elbow. And he, and somehow he is riding a bike. Forget. I mean, I could figure out how you could put your what's left of your arms on there, but braking and steering and it was the most chilling. I thought, holy shit. And he's riding like, by himself. Huh? Yeah, but, yeah. All alone. He was all alone. Killer. Like it was, I was like, wow, that not only is arrow, but that is fucking amazing. Like that is like, what a, What would any of us complain about? I watch those guys on the tour sitting on the top tube. I'm like, that's insane. You know, yeah. and that's arrow, but you see some people out yeah. here. And like I said, there's, there's some good cyclists. So last question. Okay. Um, and you, you may not, this, 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 I'm sure you've never had this question. It's that amazing. What are the, because these teams here, you have, you know, team butt ice, team, you know, butt crack, team. Butt ice. Uh, but, yeah. but, I mean, what is the top, in your, in your own little opinion, what is, or big opinion, what is the top three team names that you've ever oh. seen? Well, you mentioned Bud Ice. Those are my buddies. Um, oh, it is. You know, okay. they're, 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 I don't know how you came up with that one. I mean, they're, you know, they're a traditional you see them, team. I see them every year. You know, good. You know, I, I've got one of my, one of my real good friends I met, just a Florida guy, just having Rob Johnson comes, comes on Ragbury, cancer survivor. Um, <laughs> comes out and rides with Bud Ice. Every summer he comes up from Florida to ride with those guys. And they pick him up at the airport and um, every year. So I go down to the Gator games with them. We're big Gator fans. And every year we'll go to a Gator game together. And I didn't know him before Ragbri. And I just, he just had a Gator hat on. And I was like, so Bud Ice is a good one. Um, you know, big teams. Team Spin's been doing it for a long time. They're the purple ones with the wigs on. Mm -hmm. um, team Roadkill. Team Roadkill's road kill. Roadkill's out there. I didn't see any Roadkill stickers on the bull I today. I didn't so. see. And I, you don't see the, the, the beads as much. On, on well, Of course, you haven't seen a lot of Roadkill. Yeah. I ran into Team Velarosa this morning. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. My other favorite team. If you saw Team Bad Boy out there, I don't know how late in the day you're riding. They're out of a lot of them out of Colorado. They've got a full barrel grill on the I back and a full cooler. bar, full cooler. So they're I, so they're we started. On. Sorry, we started later yesterday. We started earlier today because it was so damn hot yesterday. And I rolled up and I thought, okay, this guy's got a huge. And I'm not talking like a little yeti. Like he's got like the old school igloo thing that takes up literally half a lane. And then I got like you know ten bikes up, and there's a dude. With a smoker on the back of his fucking bike. That's the bad boys. And I thought, okay, this is that's gotta be styrofoam. That's gotta be fake. There's no way he's hauling that thing around. No, there's no shit. Full liquor bar in it, by yeah. the way. That is could have got your Tito's right there if you wanted. Oh. You should pull them over tomorrow and say, Hey, can you pick, mix me a Tito's? Yeah. Wow. You know, so what, bad so, boys. Did, did you know that Jimmy Johnson's coming tomorrow? I heard that. Yeah. So you got Jimmy that. Johnson, and I made a mistake last week. I said Brad Kozlowski, but it's actually, actually Matt Kenseth. All right, the twenty car. So we got two NASCAR guys, and these guys, these boys, they ride like they like they like to ride. They like to hammer. So, so you're drafting them? Is that it? Uh, I'm gonna draft in the beginning, and let them think they're they're all they're, right, they're good and strong, and then teach them. I, I know what rag is about. They don't land till nine thirty, so we probably won't get on the road till we'll be passing a lot of people. So you'll have. You know, the seven car, the 48 car, and the 20 car coming through. Sweet. Yeah. TJ, thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. Thanks for having Thank you for having me. I told You're, you that earlier. You are welcome anytime to come back. Okay. I said it before. Yeah. Next year, seven. Rag bright. That'll yeah. be your seventh rag bright. That's a good number, right? Uh, I'll be right here. All right. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for tuning in to the Forward Podcast. Like, uh, like I said at the top of the show, if you have anything you want to say, if you have a suggestion, please, God knows I need suggestions, um, or questions, or concerns, or criticisms, or whatever, let me know. Send me an email. Send it to theforwardpodcast at wedosport.com. I know it's long. I know it's a little confusing. The forward podcast at we do w e d u sport singular.com the forward podcast at we do sport.com